Hey, so in a previous test, I found that um, chlorine has a really detrimental impact on your biological filter. And uh, so you need to look at some way of removing the chlorine from tap water before adding it to your pond. So here are two products that, um, uh, that uh, you can buy that you add to the water and they'll remove the chlorine. But there's a question of how quick they work um, and also are there other cheap methods you can use to, um, to remove chlorine that don't involve buying this on a regular basis. So we're going to test a few things now. So first of all, let's start with the, uh, the source of tap water, the tap, and we'll take a sample number one. So this is my reservoir tank that uh, fills up with tap water and then I use it um, to top up the pond when I do a water change. Um, this has been sitting here for a week. It's a sealed barrel. Um, I'm going to see how much chlorine there is in that water. We'll label that test number two. Now I'm going to add dechlorinator. Give it a quick stir. And then take another sample, test number three. Right, now this is a carbon filter that I put in line when I'm filling up my reservoir. Um, one of my other reservoirs. So let's see how that gets on. That's number four. This bucket has uh, been sitting here all week, so the water's been open, uh, had no other treatments. That's number five. This one has been in a bucket all week with a bubbler in there. No other treatment. Let's see how that gets on. That's number six. We've got all of our samples lined up now, and what I'm going to do is use a swimming pool chlorine test. Um, the DPD Palin test. This is usually used to test how much chlorine is in the swimming pool to make sure it's high enough to kill uh, all the nasties in the swimming pool. But uh, here we're going to use it to check that there isn't any chlorine. Now, because it's um, designed to work with very high levels of chlorine, we're going to be looking for any pale pink colour as an indication that there's still chlorine in there. It's results time, and this has been really interesting actually. So. The tap water, there's clearly a lot of chlorine in there. Um, that's um, very damaging to the fish. We want to do what we can to remove that. So if we had it in the barrel for a week. You can see it loses a bit of chlorine over that time, um, but there's still a reasonable amount in there. Uh, now number three, uh, the barrel, and then immediately after I added the dechlorinator, it's a bit less, but there's still a fair amount in there. Um, so I actually ran a separate test on that um, to look at what, what it would look like um, after two hours, two hours later, um, after the chlorinator had had a bit more chance to work. So I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. With the carbon filter, this was running at two litres a minute, and actually it looks that, like that was running far too fast. It was a brand new carbon filter, so uh, it wouldn't be that the, um, the carbon has, has run out of, um, of absorbency. Um, it must be that the rate's too fast. Um, I, I've done another variation on that to, to see what the impact is there. And then um, the fifth one is the open bucket for a week and that, that achieves next to nothing, that's just like leaving it in the barrel. Um, so leaving a bucket out doesn't help, um, this chlorine stays uh, in the water. Um, having it in an open bucket with an air stone also makes no difference uh, whatsoever compared to having it in a barrel or just leaving it out. So the air stone is no good for getting rid of that chlorine. Uh, you need to do something else. Now I mentioned I did a couple of variations um, on the experiment as the afternoon was progressing. So I went back to the barrel and took a sample two hours after I added the dechlorinator. And you can see that's basically removed all of the uh, chlorine. It's the best outcome of all of the tests. And from when I've used this before, a slight pink is, is um, gen generally there. So um, I think that's a, a success um, for that one. But you need, you need to leave dechlorinator to work is the, is the short answer there. And then the last one is running the carbon filter at one litre per minute rather than at two. So the carbon has more chance to work. Uh, if we compare that to our two litres a minute one here, it's a better um, colour but there's still some chlorine in there. So I'm gonna to have to turn that right down to a trickle because um, uh, one litre a minute is still too fast for the carbon to remove the chlorine. 
So overall conclusions, you can't get rid of chlorine just by uh, leaving a bucket out, putting an air stone in it, it just doesn't get rid of it. Um, you need to remove it either using carbon or a dechlorinator. You need to, to leave your dechlorinator to work and also you need to make sure you use enough dechlorinator. In some of the earlier tests I've done of this, uh, I found that using um, too little um, uh, leaves you with chlorine in the water. So you need to make sure you follow the instructions um, and I'll make sure I'm, I'm using uh, plenty of dechlorinator in the future and um, I'm running my carbon filter uh, low enough. You also need to replace your carbon filter uh, frequently, which means you need some way of testing that it's still effective. I think these Palin tests are really good, so um, you can get them just in the tablets um, from, from eBay. That's it for today.